For the record, Your Honor, my name is Ewan, initials HD, and I appear as defense counsel for the applicant, Mr. Johnny Wishbone. Your Honor, the purpose of today's hearing is in relation to an application for an exclusion of evidence, namely the electronic record of interview. From the facts of the case, Your Honor, the arresting police officers contravened various sections of the Police Powers uh, and Responsibilities Act and regulations. I will go through these sections in a moment, but first, I wish to take your honour briefly through the facts. There are currently 106 charges against my client, who is a 16-year-old Indigenous juvenile. Therefore, certain provisions from the Act and regulations should have been applied towards my client's best interest when he was arrested. I know three incidents incidents in a set of facts that require your honor's discretion. Firstly, when my client was arrested and questioned at the scene by the police, there was no field recordings or any notes made. Therefore, there is no evidence as to the alleged admissions made by my client except for what we have been told by the police officers after the fact. Further, the police statements were drafted three months after the offences have said to occur. As such, the admissions in the statements are questionable as no one else was present when my client was making those alleged admissions to the police. Secondly, the police officers took my client into an unmarked police vehicle with one police officer driving the car and the other accompanying him in the back. My client was then driven around to certain locations and was asked informal questions by the police officers whether he broke into any of the houses that were pointed out to him. Yana will note that my client was still under arrest and was not free to leave. When questioned, my client allegedly said, yeah, I think so, or I'm not too sure, I can't remember. But despite his uncertainty, this process goes on until 106 charges have been accumulated over the course of that evening. Yona, during both occasions when the police were questioning my client, he was not at any time provided with the opportunity to contact his parents or guardians to obtain adequate support. Pursuant to Section 418, Subsection 1 of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act, I quote and state for the record, before a police officer can start to question a person for an indictable offence, the police officer must inform the person that they may a. telephone or speak to a friend or relative to inform the person of his whereabouts and ask the person to be present during questioning. From the facts of the case, Your Honour, this clearly did not happen. The police officers immediately took my client into custody and questioned him at the scene. No opportunity was presented to him whatsoever to contact his friends or relatives. Thirdly, after this traumatic experience, my client was then taken back to the police station for a formal interview. Here, my client's recorded confessions during the interview forms the main basis of the Crown case. I have been told that my client was given a support person when he arrived but nothing in the facts tell us who this person was, except that she was a social worker. Nothing more was mentioned of this person, who bears no relationship to my client. Further, this support person supposedly told my client to just, and I quote, answer the questions the police asked you. If it was not clear to the police officers during my client's arrest, it should have been clear to them at that moment that they had very clear and very strict requirements to ensure proper support persons be present and available to my client during this pre uh, interview process. <clears throat> Your Honour, this is a clear breach of Section 421 of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act, which states, subsection 1, a police officer who wants to question a person and suspects that the person is a child, subsection 2, must not question the child unless, before questioning starts, the police officer allows the child to speak, and this is important, to a support person chosen by the child in which the conversation will not be overheard. From the facts, my client is clearly an Indigenous child, and although a support person was provided to him, he did not get to choose who that person would be. If he had been given the opportunity to choose someone else, someone he trusted, such as a parent or guardian before the interview, they may have advised him to exercise his rights to silence and wait until they have proper legal representation. The police officers knew that my client was a juvenile, as he has been in police custody for quite some time. Therefore, they should have ascertained a clearer understanding of his background and level of education to ensure that he grasped the very serious natures of the charges and the questions that were being asked of him. 
By failing to do so, the police officers have also breached Schedule 9, Section 25 of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Regulations. And here it states, a police officer who is about to question a person and reasonably suspects is an Aboriginal person must first ask questions necessary to establish the person's level of education and understanding. Your Honour, I do understand that this section up applies specifically to adults, but and however, it should apply with discretion in relation to cases concerning children. Failing to do so goes towards his level of admissibility and whether he could correctly make those admissions voluntarily. Your Honour, it is my submission that the alleged admissions should be dismissed and not be entered in as evidence. The law is there to be complied with and unfortunately the police officers clearly ignored their duties and failed to fulfil the purposes of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act, specifically Section 5, Subsection E, where the protection of a person's rights against police and policies on fairness have been contravened. This is also the same findings accepted in the Fitzgerald Inquiry and Woodwell Commission in New South Wales. My submission is that the only evidence against my client are the admissions he made during the official police interview. In light of these discoveries, I urge your honour to exercise the court's inherent discretion as demonstrated under the Bunnings and Cross as well as the Queen and Ireland principles to exclude the admissions in the electronic record of interview as evidence against my client. They should be excluded as it would undermine the fairness in which the law is based upon. Your Honour, that concludes my submissions. As Your Honour pleases. Thank you.